Oh man, come on baby, not now. <coughs> oh jeez, what's the matter with this thing? Come on baby, start, start. <laughs> Have you ever had this happen to you? Today in part one, of our three-part series, we're gonna cover the basic maintenance items you should be doing to your generator every year. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Performing your annual maintenance before you start your next RV traveling season we do ours in the winter. Maybe it'll spill over a little bit into the spring. But before we get on the road, we take care of everything that needs to be done for the year. You don't want to wait until something doesn't work and then decide to deal with it. Be proactive. That way, the entire RV and the generator is ready to go. There's a lot to know about taking care of these generators, so it will deliver the power that you need when you need it. These maintenance things are not hard to learn, nor are they particularly difficult to do. And so in order to cover everything you need to know, I decided to break this up into a three-part series. If I put this all in one video, it turned out to be way too long. Today, we're gonna to deal with part one, the basic annual maintenance you should do every year. Part two is going to be a more detailed look at all the different parts and areas you need to know about, their maintenance schedule, and some troubleshooting tips. Part three is going to cover fuel tips, the importance of proper exercising, and some safety tips. Just another little quick thing here before we get started. If you just watched today's video, part one, you're gonna miss out on a lot of really important stuff. So I highly encourage you to watch all three parts of this series. I promise you there's going to be a lot of important information in this series, even if you have a little bit different generator than we do. There's going to be something in here for everybody. So stay tuned for the other two videos coming out. So let's get started with part one, basic maintenance you should do every year. We have a Cummings own an RV 5500 watt marquee gold generator. The marquee gold series generator covers spec models HGJAA through HGJAF. We have the HGJAB E-Series. But all of these generators are very similar and are very common in the RV world. As you know, your generator is something that you want to work when you need it. Our generator right here is uh, 10 years old and has about 1200 hours on it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean the outside. Um, I use a brake cleaner and some paper towels. I may also use a, a screwdriver to kind of get down in some tight areas because you're going to get a lot of dirt. There may be a little oil in here and I like having a clean generator. I do this every year. And it also will help it uh, run cooler. You could also use a degreaser, uh, a foaming degreaser, or a different type of engine degreaser on here. Because I'm also going to be using uh, this to clean my electrical contacts. So I have one can to do multiple things. So let's start cleaning. I'm going to put my little tip on the end here. And I'm just going to start spraying in here and breaking up some of this oil and deposits. I keep mine pretty clean. It doesn't take very much for me to clean this thing. Then I'm just gonna start cleaning it. So I'm just continuing here. And in these tight areas, like I said, I'll just take a screwdriver and I'll stick it back in there where I can't reach with my hands. You see that? And just get all that off of there. It's good to get all this grease off. It makes your generator nice and clean, easy to work on. It makes it run cooler. And of course, when it's clean, if you ever run into a problem and all of a sudden you look underneath here and you happen to see oil leaking somewhere, you're like, ah, there's where the problem is because it's clean. And once you get an oil leak or if anything like that happened, it easily shows up. And remember, 
And every time you're using stuff like this, like brake cleaner or something like that, you always want to be wearing eye protection and gloves. If this stuff ever, you know, if you ever hit anything and it bounced back into your eyes, uh, it's going to it's going to burn. So I'm wearing my glasses, but I just thought I'd remind you of that. Okay, so that is looking really, really good. But as you can see on some of these other areas, you see like right in here, see all this little dust? You get, I mean, we take these RVs all over the place, right? Boondocking and out on these roads, and this is all in the back of the motorhome. And so you're going to see, even like back here, let me show you. you. You see how you get dirt and dust all up on top of all here? So what I do in this situation, I'll just take a damp rag. It's not sopping wet, it's just damp. And now I'll come in here and I'll wipe off all the surface dust. And basically, you know, just like you do in the house. Do a spring cleaning. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the electrical connections. That's why I like to use the brake cleaner. Uh, to clean the engine because I'm going to use the same stuff to do this. You know, one of the biggest problems about uh, engines or generators or in the house, all of a sudden the light won't work or something goes haywire. Well, many, many times it's an electrical problem. So I like to keep my electrical uh, connections in here clean and I protect them. Right here below the start and uh, the uh, breaker box, we have our main power connections right there. You see that? You see how clean mine are? I haven't cleaned this since last year, but I keep them clean every year. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray on some um, brake cleaner to clean that area. And you see this little sign right there? It says ground. That's where the ground is. Now it's way back in there. It's kind of hard to get to. You have to actually get to it with a socket and an extension. But again, I know that's nice and tight, but it may be dirty. I'm gonna go right on top of that ground wire and clean that connection. Get off any dust, get off any grease, make sure it's nice and clean. The next electrical connection I wanna deal with is right here. This is the oil pressure switch. I'm gonna take a paper towel and clean that male connection. And then I'm going to take the female part and clean out the inside of that spade connector there. And one last area is right here. I'm going to remove these two connectors and I'm gonna do one at a time so I don't get them mixed up. Spray a little bit on the paper towel, clean the male part, clean the female part, squirt that in there just to remove any dirt and all that kind of stuff. You get the picture, right? and do the same thing on the other one. Now that I've cleaned them, I want to protect them. And this is the same protection that I use on my battery terminals for both the chassis and the house batteries. So I just open up the top, I lift this up, and just a couple of quick shots. You see that? Put a little protection on there. I'm gonna do the same thing in the ground. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna put something in behind here, little protection there, put the switch back on. I think it's a good practice just to do one at, a one at a time because if you get in a hurry or you get distracted, somebody comes up and starts talking to you or whatever, you're like, okay, which wire went where? So just do one at a time. So there you have it. You have all of the connections cleaned and protected and we've wiped down the entire generator. One little quick tip that I forgot to mention on these gloves that I wear. I love these gloves. These are not the same gloves that I use uh, when I'm changing out my sewer hoses and all that type of stuff. But these are the ones I use when I'm wrenching on stuff. Because you can you see that texture on there? And that texture allows me to really get a good firm grip on my tools and so I don't slip. Now we're gonna change the oil. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start up the generator and let it warm up for about five minutes. This is not necessary to do. You don't have to warm it up to drain the oil and change out the oil filter. It's a practice that I like to do. I've been doing it that way all my life on all of the different equipment I've worked on. It just makes it easier and faster to drain when it's warm. So we've let the generator run for five minutes and let's change the oil. So as you can see, the first thing I've done 
as I've slipped a piece of cardboard under the generator and I've gathered all my equipment and all the items that I'm going to need to do this oil change. It just uh, keeps things clean and keeps everything right here in front of me so I can just move through this thing very quickly. Now, I have found the easiest way to, to do an oil change is just to use a bucket. We're going to put the bucket up underneath the generator and we're going to change the filter and drain the oil. Now, I have tried other ways to make this a little simpler. For example, this is my uh, old oil uh, receptacle. You saw me use this when I changed the oil on the coach. But on the coach, I installed a Fumoto valve where I can attach a clear piece of uh, tubing on the Fumoto valve. And then that just goes right into here and it drains the oil right into the, the uh, old oil con uh, container. Makes it really easy. You don't have to put it in a pan, get it all over the axle, then transfer that oil into here and all that. You just drain it right into here. Well, as you can see underneath here of where the oil filter and the drain rubber hose that's on the bottom of the generator. It's a very short hose. It's only about like one inch. I tried uh, thinking about how to uh, attach a Fumoto valve on that. Not very easy to do. And I thought, well, you know, if I figure it out, if I look at this long enough, I can probably come up with a way to do it. But you know what? I don't want to make this stuff difficult. We only do this once a year, okay? So another way I tried is I took a piece of clear hose. This fits right over that little rubber uh, drain hose that's under the generator. Okay, so that solves that problem. I can now drain the oil directly into here. But I still have to take off the oil filter, which is still going to be a little messy. I'm going to show you how I do that, though. But, you know, without all this extra equipment and all that, I have found the easiest way is just to put a bucket under the generator. We're going to drain the oil in here, and we're going to drain the oil uh, filter that is full of oil in here. Okay, so now we're on the underside of the generator. And here we have the oil filter and the drain tube I was telling you about. See this little piece of rubber here? So what I do is I just put my bucket right up underneath. That way this bucket will catch the oil from here and here. So one little trick that I have found about the filter, I drill a hole right in the middle of it. Why did I do that? Well, because it drains the oil out of the filter and that way when I remove this filter it's not as messy. The next thing I do is I go back to the front and I open up the drain valve. This is the oil drain valve right here. By unscrewing this here as it begins to drain below and then I also loosen the cap right here. This is the fill cap. By loosening the fill cap, opening up the drain valve and drilling a hole up underneath on the filter, that removes kind of the vacuum that's caused in that area. And now the oil is draining into the bucket. Can you see that? It's now draining. Now we're gonna deal with the air filter while everything is draining. It's got three clips. You got one here, one here, and one back here. Up here, it has three little clips that it kind of inserts up into. So you have to lift it up and pull it down. You see that? You see those little clips right there? See how it's got that little ledge? So that has to go up and in and then down. So you lift up and remove that. And this is the old air filter. You simply just remove it. And if you look at this air filter, you can see how it's dirty. You cannot clean these air filters. You don't try to blow them out with air. You don't try to wash them with soap or water or anything like that. When they get dirty, you just replace it. This is a new air filter. And all this stuff, like I said, will be in our Amazon store. So you don't have to worry about going on the hunt and spending two hours online trying to find a new parts and all that. But of course, you know, if you have a little bit different version in this, you still can use our Amazon store. You can go to the link below and click our Amazon store and find the right parts that you need Put them in the cart and check out. But look at the difference. Here's the dirty one that we're going to change out, and here's a clean one. You see that difference? This is a little over a year old. So we're going to take that and throw it away. 
You just take the new one. There is no preparation, nothing you have to do here. You simply turn it and put it back in. But before we do that, we're gonna take a little bit more brick cleaner and just spray some on a paper towel and come in here and clean this area. You can see it's not very dirty, but it's always good to just kind of clean these areas out just in case it's dirty. Okay, so the area is clean. You take the new air filter, you turn it around and you place it in there. And you can see it has this raised uh, rubber gasket right there. This always goes out. This part always goes in, okay? Then you take the lid and remember those three little latches there? You just put those up underneath there, push it down, snap it on, snap it on, snap it on. All three clips now are secured. The air filter is complete. Okay, the oil is almost finished draining, but I wanted to show you before we get up underneath here. Here is the new oil filter we're gonna use. It's a Cummings Onan, and this is what it looks like. Okay, you can see by the size of my hand, that's about the size of it. And so when we go up underneath, this is what we're gonna use. Okay, so the oil has finished draining. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the drain valve back off. Turning it clockwise, this one right here, turning it clockwise to where it's just snug. That's it. So now let's go back under the generator and I'll show you how to change out the oil filter. Okay, so the oil has drained from the filter and our drain hose. Now we're gonna change the oil filter, which is right here. And as you can see, it's recessed way up in there. Remember the new filter I showed you right here? You can see that there's only a small amount that is sticking out. And it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get a hold of this by your hands and unscrew this. And I'm a strong guy, and I can't even get a hold of that. And because it's recessed and it has this screen around it, you can't use a conventional ring type oil filter remover. There's just not enough room in here to uh, get that tool up in here and undo this filter. So what you do is you use these Tecton pliers. These are the same pliers that you saw Joni use when she uh, changed the oil in the coach. You know, she reached up in there and you know, it was a little hard for her. Uh, so she used these pliers, these Tecton pliers, to just break it loose and then take the uh, filter out. Well, it's the same principle here. You see how you can get up in here and get a hold of that filter? You always want to counterclockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten. See these jaws right here? Those jaws really get a hold of that filter up in that really tight area, and then you can just begin to unscrew it. Now, once it gets loose, like it is right now, now you can take and do it by hand. And as I unscrew it, you see that oil? Now that goes right into the bucket. You see that? There was some remaining oil up in that chamber. It's gonna go through the filter, and then I just take it out and turn it upside down and let the rest of it drain out. That's why using a bucket is just the easiest way. You don't have to worry about it spilling everywhere. And now, once it's drained out, I just take the oil filter, I turn it up, and I put it in a plastic bag and seal it up. Now I'm gonna move the bucket out of the way. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some paper towels and I'm just gonna go up in that cavity and I'm gonna wipe off any additional oil that's sitting up in there. You wanna make sure that you look up in there when you're done doing this and make sure that a piece of paper towel or anything didn't rip off and got stuck up in there. See that up in there? It's all nice and clean. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to fill the oil filter up three quarters of the way with oil before I insert and tighten it back up. And the reason I do that is adding new oil to a generator goes very, very slowly. It's nothing like adding it to a car. And I'm gonna be using Royal Purple. This is what I use, a standard straight 30 weight synthetic oil. And before any of you guys panic, not to worry, I'm gonna cover the oils in just a few minutes, but this is the one that I use. It's straight 30 weight. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to add three quarters 
Just let that sit down in there. And the reason I do this is because two reasons. It helps me speed up adding the oil to the generator, but when I first start it back up, the filter has already got a lot of oil in it. And that's really good for the generator. So that's got oil in it now. Now I'm going to take and dab the, that little puddle that you see there, and I'm going to wipe oil on top of that seal. And before I forget, I want to add one more little tip here. When you pull out the old oil filter, always look at the top and make sure that the ring, the oil ring, this seal right here, came out with the old oil filter. You do not want to pull this oil filter out and this thing happened to separate and it stuck up inside. Then you go put another oil filter on top of the old seal. I've never had that happen to me, but I know it's happened to some. So when you pull this out, make sure that the seal is still intact. Okay, so we have our oil filter filled up. I don't know, half, maybe three quarters of the way full of oil. I've wiped the seal with a little bit of oil and now we're going to take it by hand and we're going to push it up in there and we're going to start to tighten it by hand now i know a lot of you have arthritis or maybe you just don't have the grip that you used to you know when you were young and the rule of thumb with filters with oil filters is is you want to tighten it till it's snug and then just a hair more and then as the generator runs and it heats and cools and heats and cools that o-ring that i showed you it will seal it will set but those of you who have a hard time you just don't have the grip that you used to when you, you get it as tight as you can and if that's you know you're just like oh, man my hand hurts what you can do in those cases is take your protecton uh, pliers again and put them up in here and give it that extra little snug okay one last tip about that oil filter and giving it just a little snug with this if you have arthritic hands or you don't have the right grip just remember the key word that i said you want to bring it just snug okay you don't want to get a hold of that filter and really just crank on it and get that thing so tight it won't go anymore you do not want to do that with a with an oil filter so you can see here's my old oil and what i do is I just put a funnel here and I transfer it to my recycling container and then I'll take this container to Walmart or any auto parts store or anything like that and they'll uh, they'll drain this and empty this for freight so that's how you get rid of the old oil then I just clean out the bucket real good and I use it for multiple other things so this generator takes two quarts of oil and as you saw I already put I don't know, two-thirds of an oil filter full of it already in there. So we have closed our drain valve right here. And this is where you add oil. You can even see that this is the dipstick. You can see where it says full or add. That goes in here and you tighten it up and this is where you add oil. Onan recommends the following weights of oil. 1540 all year round seasons in liquid or air-cooled generators. This generator right here is air-cooled, so I could use a 1540. But straight 30, which is what I use, is the preferred summer grade for optimum oil consumption in air-cooled generators. So this is what I use all the time in ours, 30 weight. I always use synthetic. Now, you can use a Mobile One synthetic but I'll tell you, my experience trying to find straight synthetic 30 weight, and especially in just quartz, is hard to find. So I use Royal Purple 30 weight. It's easy to find. I can find it in single quartz, and I only need two of them. It's a robust synthetic oil for this application, but I'll say, I know there's a lot of Lucas and Amsoil uh, fans out there, so by all means, you can use those brands too. I just happen to prefer Royal Purple. Now these gas generators, they do burn some oil. Okay, they're built that way. They're supposed to burn oil. So that's why it's always a good practice. Every time you get ready to use your generator, unscrew the cap and look at the dipstick and make sure that it has plenty of oil. If it doesn't, add some. So let's go ahead and start adding the oil. What I do as a general practice is I'll just put some 
paper towels right up underneath here just in case I get a little drippage. I'll put my funnel up in here and I'll start adding oil. Now remember what I told you. You add it very slow, about that much, and let it seat down. You know how it is with a uh, car, you can just sit there and glug, 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 and it just goes, it goes straight on down. You don't have to wait and let it kind of work its way down. With these generators, you do, and especially as it gets fuller with oil. So now you take the dipstick and you put it back in, and whenever you check the oil level, you want to make sure that the cap is all the way down. Then, when you want to check it, you unscrew it, and you can see it's right at the full mark. We have one last thing to do, and that's clean the spark arrestor. Where is the spark arrestor? Well, it's under the generator. Okay, so here's where we were changing out the oil filter and the drain plug, or the drain line, I should say. If you'll just come right over here, and way up there, this right here is your spark arrestor. We need to remove that. If you've never done this before, that thing can be pretty tight in there. So that's when you take some penetrating fluid, you see that right there? And you come up and you spray just a couple little dabs right around the threads up there and let it just sit there for, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever. Allow the penetrating fluid to get up in there and loosen that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crescent wrench and you can see how it's a square plug. That's why we're using this wrench and we're going to start counterclockwise and so we're going to loosen this plug and while I'm loosening that for inquiring minds, FYI, a spark arrestor plays a critical role to prevent them from igniting grasses and leaves, okay? We park these things over grass and dry leaves and all this kind of stuff, and the spark arrestor keeps the RV generator from igniting all that dry grass uh, that may be underneath it. So by cleaning the spark arrestor, it blows out all the accumulated soot that gets inside there over time. So I'm gonna reach up in there, and that's what it looks like. The little plug has a square tip on it. So now that we've removed this, let me show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so we got the plug out and we're going to start the generator. We're going to put the door back on and we're going to allow that soot, that accumulated soot to blow out of that area. Remember, whenever you do this, don't be parked over a bunch of dry grass that could catch fire or leaves or anything like that. Okay, so we started it up and I let it run for about five minutes. Here's another little trick that I want to show you on how to make this plug get out easy from now on. So you take the plug and of course my brass bristle brush and I use some anisees or never sees. Uh, I have this in my store too. You put a little bit on the threads and screws, uh, bolts, what have you. So the next time you come back a year or two or three or five, whatever it is, it's just like its name says, it never ceases. And that's all you need is just a little tiny bit. And so now I'm gonna go back and put this back up in there and tighten it. There is no torque on this. Uh, you Again, it's like everything else we've done. You use that crescent wrench and tighten it and tighten it and then get it snug. That's all you do. Uh, when you go to go put this back up in there, it's gonna be hot up there. We just got through running the generator. So you have two choices. You can either just let it sit until the generator totally cools and it's cool to get up in there and start to wrench and tighten this thing, or you can put on some better gloves. This is what I choose to do. I mean, I want to get this thing done. So just keep that aware when you're around that area after you've run the generator. If you have an air-cooled generator, an RV generator like we do, keep the door in place and closed when you're running this. Now, of course, if you're troubleshooting some things or you're doing maintenance and turning it on and off, and you know, it's okay to leave it off for when you're doing those type of things. But under normal operating conditions, you always wanna take the door and put it on and snap it into place. Having the door on allows the generator to cool properly. Okay, this applies to air-cooled generators. As you can see, I added handles to my generator door. And the reason I did that 
is without the handles, I had to reach in behind this lip and pull it back and it would hit my hand on the back of this lead. And I'd end up always knocking and dinging and bleeding my back of my hands. So I added these two handles, so now I can just grab it and put my palms up here and just pop it right off. You guys have heard me say over and over again in all of my videos, if you don't have your user manuals and your service manuals for all of your equipment, including the generator, you need to get those now for your particular model. You do not want to wait until something happens. What happens a lot of times is people will wait and wait and well, I'll get it later. And then they find it's too hard to find them or they no longer produce them. Get your manuals now. I'm going to give you a link uh, to where you can get your particular Cummings Onan uh, gas generator manual. So make sure you go down there and look for that if you don't have your manual already. As you saw in my previous critical high priority things every RVer should be carrying with them at all times, one of those things was what? <laughs> little test question. It was spare parts, critical spare parts. When your generator, if it goes bad, you want to be able to get your hands on those parts right now because you need this right now. So I highly recommend that you carry these critical spare parts. I carry a spare fuel filter, a fuel pump, an oil filter, two quarts of oil, and an oil pressure switch. Remember, today's video covered your basic annual maintenance that you should do every year. Don't forget to watch part two and part three that will be coming out in the next few weeks because if you don't watch those videos, you're going to be missing out on a lot of very important information that goes all along with what we did today. Now I know many of you will have a little bit different model than we do, but I hope this three-part series and this one here, the one that's part one that we covered today, will encourage you and motivate you to do this stuff every year. If you do, it's going to prevent a lot, if not most, any problems down the road. And it's going to keep your generator running in top-notch condition. When you need it, it's going to start and it's going to deliver power. To those of you out there that have maybe devised some of your own special tips and tricks that you've learned along the way that makes your gas RV generator maintenance a lot easier, please uh, give those comments below. But when you do, make sure you specify the kind of generator you have and then explain the tip or trick that you've learned. That way we all can learn. I mean, it's all about learning and helping each other, right? Don't forget, I've got a ton of other upgrade and maintenance videos in our playlist. I highly encourage that you watch those. I mean, you do not have to go to the School of Hard Knocks, <laughs> okay? So if you'll go right up here and go to that playlist, click View List, and you'll see all types of videos there, very similar to these kind of things. And who knows, you may find something there that will really be helpful to you. Everything that I've shown you here is in our Amazon store. I'll have all the parts and everything that we used here in, that, in our store. But even if you have a little bit different generator and you have a little bit different part numbers, you can still click our Amazon store link and that'll take you to Amazon. And then look and search for your particular parts, put them in the cart and check out. And not only just these parts, but any gear that you need while you're RVing, by using our store, it's a great way to say, thank you, Martin. Thank you for taking the time to show uh, the, us these videos because we make a very small little commission um, uh, when you use our store. But you know what? When you all use it or many use it, it really helps out. And uh, it's a great way to say thank you. Oh, one other thing. If you like this kind of stuff, how to fix stuff, how to maintain stuff, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing is free. Just hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time I upload my next video. So this is the conclusion of part one of the basic maintenance items you should be taking care of every year. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.